Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book, Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very, very interesting topic, the differentiation between the neurogenic claudication and vascular claudication. The neurogenic claudication and vascular claudication. The neurogenic claudication is basically because of spinal stenosis. It is due to the degeneration of the spine. So there is narrowing of the spinal canal. It is because of the osteophyte spurs, the thickened pedicles, the thickened ligament, the hypertrophic facets, the thickened lamina, the thickened spinal ligaments. All these cause the spinal canal stenosis. Because of that, the corda equina gets affected. There is a claudication when they have claudication due to the pressure on the nerve roots and blood vessels of corda equina. So lumbar spinal stenosis causes neurogenic claudication especially when they hyperextend. But when they flex on the contrary, there is opening of the canal and therefore the nerve roots get decompressed and the neurogenic claudication gets relieved. So claudication, it's a pain. The pain due to the nerves and the spinal canal stenosis is neurogenic claudication, whereas vascular cord claudication is because of the peripheral arterial disease. Vascular claudication is because of peripheral arterial disease. The causes could be due to diabetes, smoking or other factors. Here they have the intermittent or vascular claudication. They will have severe muscle pain, especially the calf muscles, which occur during walking or exercise and it gets relieved with rest. So what is this claudication? Initially they can walk say for about 10 meters after that they get pain after that with 8 meters itself they can get pain later 6 meters itself they get pain so the distance becomes shorter and shorter as the disease gets worsened so we have pain on the back running onto the leg because of the nerves which we call as neurogenic claudication we have pain especially in the calf muscles, especially when they exercise. It is because of peripheral arterial disease, what we call it as vascular claudication. So now the question comes, how do we differentiate vascular claudication and the neurogenic claudication? So the difference is between the neurogenic claudication and the vascular claudication. There are about 10 important differences between the neurogenic claudication and vascular claudication. First, the location of the pain. Where is the pain? In the neurogenic claudication, it is because of the spinal canal stenosis, especially the lumbar canal stenosis. The quala equina gets affected. So they have pain in the back, legs and bilateral. Quala equina, so it's bilateral. Whereas if it is a vascular claudication because of the peripheral arterial disease, they have pain especially in the calf muscles and it is unilateral. So the vascular claudication, the pain is in the calf muscle and it is unilateral. Whereas if it is a neurogenic claudication, the pain is in the back and the legs and it is bilateral. So very important point. The second, there will be associated symptoms. For neurogenic claudication, obviously the associated symptoms will be neurological. For example, there can be sensory disturbances, there can be weaknesses or or changes in the reflex pattern or priapism, painful erections or ejaculation. So there will be neurological symptoms associated with neurogenic claudication. Obviously, if it is a vascular claudication, there will not be any neurogenic symptoms. Removing factors. This is very, very important, especially for the spinal canal stenosis or lumbar canal stenosis, neurogenic claudication. When they flex the back when they bend like this, the spinal canal space opens up and the nerve roots gets decompressed. 
so the pain gets relieved so whenever they flex the pain gets relieved as if they are bending forwards so in relieving factors neurogenic claudication when they flex the spine it opens the canal and therefore when there is forward bending the pain gets relieved on the contrary in the vascular claudication it is because of the vascular compromise so when they walk there is an increased blood supply to the muscles which is a necessity so when they take rest the muscles need less blood supply less oxygen and therefore here the relieving factor is taking rest in neurogenic claudication the relieving factor is bending forwards flexing the spine so as to open the spinal canal whereas in vascular claudication the relieving factor is taking rest exercise worsens and the rest relieves it the aggravating factors prolonged standing when they stand for a for a long time prolonged standing there can be a hyper extension of the spine and there could be worsening of the neurogenic claudication in vascular claudication when they exercise when they walk a lot they get pain so that is an aggravating factor walking uphill and walking downhill very very important when we walk uphill the vascular claudication worsens because they had to walk uphill they have to strain so muscles have to strain a lot of blood supply is needed for muscles so walking uphill will worsen the vascular claudication but walking uphill walking uphill will relieve the neurogenic claudication symptoms are produced later and it relieves when they walk downhill walking downhill here the symptoms get relieved because walking downhill vascular claudication it is easier to walk and therefore the symptoms gets reduced but walking downhill here the symptoms worsen in neurogenic claudication so walking uphill the vascular claudication symptoms worsens walking downhill the neurogenic claudication symptoms worsen likewise bicycle test when they are asked to cycle it involves lot of exercise and therefore vascular claudication worsens but on the bicycle test if they flex the spinal canal opens up and in fact the symptoms get relieved in neurogenic claudication vascular claudication is because of arterial narrowing and therefore when you check out on the pulse the arterial pulse may be feeble or absent in vascular claudication but neurogenic claudication has got nothing to do with the vessels so arterial pulse will be normal and the neurological examination after exercise after exercise when we perform a neurological examination obviously the neurogenic claudication they will manifest with neurological symptoms like weakness or loss of reflexes but vascular claudication they got no neurological findings after exercise but the most important point of all these points is that in neurogenic claudication there is worsening of pain with hyper extension because there is narrowing of the spinal canal in vascular claudication there is worsening of pain with leg exertion exercise so exercise and exertion worsens the pain of vascular claudication spine hyper extension worsens the pain of neurogenic claudication so when a person comes with pain in the legs back it is it may appear difficult to differentiate whether it is neurogenic claudication or vascular claudication but when we go systematically step by step and follow all these points and the important differentiating points between neurogenic claudication and vascular claudication we can appear the patient with confidence and diagnose it whether it's vascular claudication or neurogenic claudication so very important clinical point these are all the important differences to differentiate vascular claudication from neurogenic claudication i hope you have enjoyed listening to this lecture if you have any suggestions or comments kindly post on to my youtube channel or please like subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my fb page dr sinwas concepts thank you bye